One of the things I like the most about the Cybertruck is you're able to take a pretty radical change in design of what a truck should look like. You're even able to take it up another notch. One of the cool things about that is Tesla has already provided you the leads for some of the power that you're going to need. Of course, the Cybertruck is 48 volt architecture, which is new in the industry. And that means 12 volt accessories don't work. And there is a way to work around this. And we're going to cover that all in today's video because Tesla has provided two power leads on this truck, both of which you can tap into and you can convert that to 12 volts. So you don't have to buy specialized products that are made specifically for 48 volt use. So stick around with me to the end of the video because I'm not only going to show you how I installed all these lights, tapped into the power, but also how I control these lights from inside the cab wirelessly. We're going to cover all of that right now. Now with the Cybertruck, we actually have two power leads. One of them is here in the front and it's in behind the tub. We'll cover that in a moment. The other one is up top here and it actually feeds onto the roof rail mounting point here closest to where the passenger sits. Those two power leads provide 48 volts of power at up to 400 watts. So those are some important numbers to know, especially the 400 watt number. We're going to step down 48 volts to 12 volts. We'll cover that soon, but just know each power lead independently can function up to 400 watts. Both those power leads are independently powered on the screen in the truck. So you can turn on the power in the front and you can turn on the power on the roof here on the Cybertruck independently of each other. So that gives you up to 800 watts of power on two different sets. Everything on my truck right now is running on the power lead in the front. And that means this front light bar, about 20 inch light bar here, I've got four smaller lights along the sides and these are 18 watts a piece. And then on the very back, I actually have two more about the same size, but 60 watts each. Total wattage I'm using with the whole setup right now is 318 watts. So I still have some room in there. I didn't max it out. That gives me the ability to add a little bit more if I want to, which I'm thinking about adding a couple more on the bottom in the front. Of course, I don't have the light bar on top. And when I do get the light bar on top, I will be using that power feed at the top. And that is going to be close to 400 watts. Another point of note, these light bars are from a company called Nylite. And they are pretty big in the aftermarket industry for lights. They're known for affordability and durability. So these are pretty good. They're not the most efficient ones on the market, but they are durable and affordable. All in, you're probably looking at, I don't know, 100 less than $200 for everything that I have done to add all the lights around here. And even if you're not using lights, but you wanna power something else, those steps are going to be exactly the same. So first and foremost, we need to get into the front. And once we open the front, we're gonna need to get this tub out of here. So first, let's take off the bolts required. There are two bolts here, and if you don't have this handy dandy accessory from Tesla. You just have a plastic cover here. Open that plastic cover. You'll see these two bolts. Take those two bolts, those two bolts, and then behind this top dressing tray, there's actually a bolt here and a bolt here. All six bolts are 10 millimeters. Of course, we need to make sure we're careful. This uh, cap for the uh, washer fluid can actually be removed, but it can also, you can just kind of open this up carefully um, around it. There are some clips that are holding this all in place. We also need to remove um, both of these bump stops. They're kind of tricky. It's like a pull and twist counterclockwise. Come over to the driver's side. This is where your button is that cable is right behind here. So make sure you disconnect that while you're pulling this out. Otherwise you will break that if you don't uh, disconnect it, pull it up and it removes pretty easily. Now I wanna point out a couple of things here. As you can see, I've already had everything wired up and we can see our feed here. There's three wires that come out of here. There's a green one and then there's a multicolored one, um, one for 
what's your positive, one that's going to be your negative. This device here I added, this is a regulator. This is sometimes commonly referred to as a step down. What this device does is it takes 48 volts and steps it down to push out 12 volts. So it can take the 48 volts that the truck wants to send, convert that into something that my 12 volt accessories can use. That is how we're going to step that down. From there, we have this. This is my junction box. This is what's going to power all the accessories to the wireless switches I have inside the cab. So basically what we have is power running to the regulator. Regulator stepping 48 volts down to 12 volts. That then is feeding this junction box, which is then allowing me to separate power into individual feeds. And in this case, up to six individual feeds from inside the cab, I'm able to select which accessory I want on and still have power completely on. So once I hit the power on button on the screen, rather than all the lights coming on all the time, I can now select which ones individually I want on or turn them all off without killing the power. So on the fly, I can quickly select which lights I want to turn on and when I want to do that. Another thing, you'll see that this is actually not zip tied down and it would be smart to zip tie down and I will zip tie this, but where I have located this right back in here is all because it gives me the ability to access it a little bit easier, meaning if I pull the uh, dressing trim off of the top, I can actually access this without taking the entire tub out of the front of the car. And that's kind of a big deal because it makes it a lot easier to either add accessories or if there's an issue, be able to get to it a lot easier than taking the entire tub out. So now the beautiful thing is this, from there, we can feed all of our accessories. So as an example, my front 20 inch light bar right here, this is actually feeding behind my bumper and it is going in where the tow hook is normally at. Um, it's actually behind this metal plate here, but then that comes into the front area and feeds all the way up into that junction box. For the lights on the rack, this is another beautiful thing. Rather than having wires everywhere and trying to figure out how to break into the cab, things like that, I've actually got the wires all coming to this corner right here. And in that corner, what's happening is I actually have them coming in behind that rubber gasket right there. So it's coming all the way down underneath this rubber gasket. There's plenty of room underneath it. It's a big cavity and it allows me to bring all the wires down and in through this area. And I have the same thing going on on the other side as well. So basically all of our wires can then run on the outside of the truck, not through the inside of the cab while still being able to have switches on the inside without wiring, having to figure out how do I get that inside. So what you can see here is we have one set of wires. This is going to be for the very back of the vehicle, the back lights that is running here independently. The side lights, I actually ran them this way for whatever reason. I had more cable, I guess, and ran it up, back up and around, over and into the junction box. And then on the passenger side, like that last set, you can see the wire, it's coming in through here, going around that area so there's no snags, and then it's just following existing wire harnesses all the way across to get to where this junction box is right back there. So here in the cab, this is where I have mounted the wireless controller, and it's actually double-sided tape that I use to mount the bracket that holds it in place, rather than using a couple of screws. It does come, of course, with all the hardware you need to do this, but I didn't want to screw into anything in this cab, honestly, but I felt like this was the right place for this to be stored. It's super easy to use. It doesn't do anything all on its own. You actually have to press two buttons to turn it on, and then you can select each of the individual zones that you may want to use when you're using this, and they can all turn on and off as you please. Again, if you press two buttons on, two buttons off. So two buttons, power up whichever accessories you want, power them off as you desire. And here on the screen, I'm gonna show you how we get the lights to actually function. So we'll turn this off, we'll go through the whole step. First, we need to go to outlets and mods. Here's our two power feeds. We have one for the front, and then we have one for, this says roof, if you can see that. I don't know, maybe you can't, but 
power feed for the roof, power feed for the frunk. These are separate and independent, like I had said. So this, when I turn that on, that'll only power the 400 up on top. It will not power the power feed in the frunk. So we don't even want to use that right now. What we want to use is the power feed in the frunk. That's all we do. Now the power is on. So coming back down here to our control panel, now power is on for this and I can turn on each individual zone that I desire, and I will show you here what that looks like. Just press it, turn it on, turn it off. So like I said, each individual zone, there's our front, and then we can turn on our sides, which are also powering on one at a time, and you can turn this on and off as many times as you like, however long you like, and that is pretty much it. If you turn it on, and you turn the switch off, it also turns that zone off. So we can turn this back on, power the switches, no problem. But this is where things are a little bit different. Because we're using a step down, the truck is actually trying to protect itself. So let's say we turn this off, but then we realize, you know what? Actually, we wanna keep going. So we turn it back on, turn our switches back on, and you can see nothing is happening. And there's a reason for this. If you put a multimeter on the truck, what you're gonna see is that power feed, when you turn it off, it doesn't go to zero. It actually slowly goes down from 48 volts. So it has to go through this cycle before it'll allow you to use these switches again. I don't know exactly how much time, but it's about a minute or so. And you have to have this off that whole time before you turn that back on to be able to run these accessories. So it is um, 8.55, almost 8.56 at the moment. So at 8.57, just to be safe, I'll come right back, we'll turn on the power feed, and then we'll try this again. Okay, it is now 4.57, so let's see if, it ended up being about a minute and 15 seconds. Let's see if that was enough time. That was enough time. So it's about a minute that it has to cycle to um, go through whatever that process is, where it's slowly decreasing voltage at that regulator. So it's just part of this, but um, if you don't want to buy specialized stuff that's 48 volt specifically, this is how you can use 12 volt accessories. And there are some things that will never come in 48 volts. So this gives you the ability to use any 12 volt accessory as you desire. You could even wire up something in the front like an outlet of 12 volts to power some accessories up there if you so desire. So that's it. I know that this should be like a 30 minute, an hour long video, but it's really not more complicated than that. It takes about five minutes to open up this tub, takes a couple of minutes to splice into the leads that are in there. And um, then you just run wiring from your accessories. I really like these lights because of the affordability factor and I don't have to worry about them breaking over time or wearing out. Um, it's a well-known brand, good brand, but affordable. And just remember, this is 400 watts output on the front and 400 watts on the top of the vehicle. So that is your limit. So make sure whether you get these lights or some other, make sure you keep tabs on how much wattage it's requiring for each of these lights that you're putting on there. Don't exceed the 400 or it's just not gonna work. Also, installing that junction box is just makes even the wiring itself even easier because now we have independent leads to each of these areas and i can turn things on and off as i please doing it all from the comfort of the cab it's both battery powered and you, of course you can run a usb-c to it but batteries work just fine a number of different options for stickers you can put on there so you can label them however you desire and I'm gonna find out once I add the light bar if I can still use that same switch on a different junction box for the top. Because for the top, unless I go with a 48 volt setup, I'm probably gonna have to do basically the same thing you're seeing here. And if you do use the tap on top, it's the same process. You can just run a couple of wires down to the front if you wanna store it here or run a couple of wires anywhere you want for that step down purpose. Otherwise, just use that for the top light bar and keep it separate from the rest of this. Hope that you enjoyed this video. Hope this video was helpful. It really is just that easy to do this. So thanks so much for joining us today. Can't wait to catch you on the next one.